You already know what time it is. This is the Certified Podcast, and I'm your host, Mike Ginn. This is episode number five, and I'm on with singer and songwriter Selena George as we talk about her passion for music, her journey, and all the great music she's working on for 2018. But first, just a friendly reminder that the Certified Podcast puts out new episodes every Tuesday and Friday. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and of course, thecertifiedmag.com, where we have show notes on every single episode, plus all of our other great content. Sponsors, if you'd like to get in touch with us about advertising on the show, the link to contact me is in the show notes. In fact, anyone is welcome to get in touch. I don't care if it's feedback, comments, submissions. I read every single one. Now, let's get to episode number five with Selena George. This is the Certified Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Certified Podcast. This episode I am joined by DMV's own, the beautiful and talented Selena George. Selena, how are you today? I'm doing well. Hi everybody. Um, doing well, Mike. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I've known you for a couple years now, but most people might be just getting to know you. Uh, I see uh, constantly you're always putting out new music, so that's always a great way to kind of get exposure to yourself. Um, but... For people that don't know you, um, why don't you take a second and uh, let everybody know a little bit about yourself? Sure. So uh, my name is Selena. Um, I'm from Rockville, Maryland, and I'm a, I'm an artist by way of music. So pretty much, I I, I write, I sing and songwrite. I write my own music, um, and uh, my sound can be, I guess, comparatively described as a cross blend of R&B and indie with some soul influence. Um, and lately, a little, to, lately a little bit yeah. of hip hop influence too. I and, saw a, and a little bit of hip hop. I, 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 I saw that pop up too. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it's funny because I don't consider myself to be a rapper at all, but like lyrically, it's just something that comes really, really naturally to me. Um, just, I guess, rhyming and speaking fast. <laughs> so I've, yeah, I've, I've done some hip hop tracks. Well, are, all, are music, my, all music is kind of fun. poetry in some way, right? Yeah. Oh, of course. Of so course. it's just, it's, it's just a matter of how you deliver it. Whether formatted it's formatted expression. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're singing it, talking it, you got a little twang in your voice, like your country. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't really matter. It's all, you know, when it's on paper, it all kind of looks the same. Right. So. Um, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. your, just your delivery. And, uh, mm-hmm. I remember when, when you first told me that you were a singer, uh, I looked pretty foolish cause I doubted you. Um, and maybe, maybe everybody does in the beginning. Well, you're, you're kind of unassuming. You're the small, like little package. And then I remember the first time you sang for me and I was just blown away because this big, bold voice came out of this small, tiny girl. Oh, I girl. remember that. I do remember that. I, remember I, was like, that. You're yeah. not a, I was like, you're not a singer. Stop it. And, and you know, yeah. I've, I've been in this industry forever. and But you didn't really, you know, you, you don't really assume the people that you know are those kind of people because you just take it for granted, sure. I guess, especially the closer sure. you are to people. Um, but, yeah, the first time you sang for me, you just blew me away because your voice was so bold. So big. Well, thank you. Thank and you. then, of course, I since then, over the last couple of years, I've seen you really kind of go through ups and downs. I've been trying but to a lot more exposure. Oh, yeah. You've gotten a lot more exposure. Oh, yeah. But um, so it's nice to see you out there. I've seen you perform at different venues, especially throughout DC. Uh, For I've sure. seen I've seen you drop a number of new music religiously, uh, whether it's through your YouTube page. Uh, and all those all those links will be on the show notes for everybody to to get a hold of. But uh, yeah, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, uh, whatever other platform people can usually find you on, yeah. you have so much new music constantly all coming of them. out. Yeah, I mean you got to right, you got to get your name out everywhere. Yeah. Same with the podcast, like I have it everywhere. So uh, if you can find it, it is there. I mean, it's not hiding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we we're talking about like how your sound kind of goes different mm-hmm. directions but 
And it is kind of, it is kind of hard to put you in a, in a genre, right? Well, yeah, and that's I, that's like all intentional because I feel like as an artist, you know, if you put yourself into a box, then you get comfortable being in that box and then you stop kind of, you know, pushing yourself to try to try different things. And um I don't think that's not how I like to do, you know, music and create. So I don't really attach myself to a particular label or sound or style because it's always susceptible to change. Like I was listening to country music yesterday. And I was like, you know what? I might want to try, which, but I probably won't go in this direction, country because, you know, it's I wouldn't uh, put it past something you. I haven't done before. But, you know, it's it, I could if I wanted to, if I wanted to wake up and do country music, it's something that I could do just like how, you know, I went from doing acoustic to hip hop in a matter of a year or two years. So it, it's, you know, it, it really just depends on my mood and how I'm feeling. But the one thing that I can say that is consistent with, you know, the music that I put out is it is genuine. It's very genuine. It comes from a very genuine place. So that's always a key component. Well, yeah, I mean, I've always noticed a lot of your stories, a lot of your lyrics, I should say. I mean, all lyrics are stories, but uh, a lot of a lot of your lyrics are very personal. Uh, whether it's your experiences in life, and I um, find yeah. I find like most good music throughout history has always been somebody telling their own tale, right? And even if right? you, even if you look something more modern, uh, you can look to a you know a John Mayer album or go mm -hmm. even further, Taylor Swift, right? How much money has she made? off singing about her exes. Um, Millions, I know. This girl's got it down to a science. She's got uh, it down yeah. to a science. You better her, not break her heart. Yeah, her, Katy Perry, like all of them, Rihanna, um, all, of them yeah. tend, all of them tend to sing about, yeah, people that broke their heart, basically. Uh, it was, they'll mask it a little bit, but you can tell the personal note to some of their best songs because those are the ones they care about. They're singing the most passionately. Um, yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't know which dummy broke your heart, but I noticed. Oh, the, I mean, I, I noticed the last. I've been like, around the block a, a few times, so. No, 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 you have. You know, it, uh, it happens. It but happens. the last like six months to a year, you've been really putting out a new vibe that I've really been digging. Um, uh, especially Thank the you. last, the last few months when you've kind of like gotten back into putting more music out, and, and I don't yeah. know, that's only more music, but more of that vibe, more no, of that, took, more I of that took energy. A break for a while. Yeah, more of that, that energy. Was so I was going through some, some pretty tough stuff. So I took a break, but definitely getting back into music is helping me to recover and, you know, figure out what stories I want to tell next. Cause I think I'm just about done with love for a while. I think I'm, I think it's I think funny. I'm you said. I think phase. it's funny. You said take a break. Your, your, yeah. version, your version of a break is a lot <laughs> different than most people's versions of a break. You took like a couple weeks off. Like, <laughs> like most, most people and take like me, years off. You took like, may, I like know, literally, dude. I think the last track you had out was like maybe, you took maybe like five or six months off. But like, most people take to me, years that's off. Way but, too long. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But you're still really young. You know, what, 22, 23? 23. Yeah. 23. So, yeah, I mean, you're still real young. So, you taking a break isn't something that's bad. Sometimes it's good to get a little perspective I, f I found you know you can sit there and you have to yeah you have to I mean in order for like your soul to truly heal sometimes or whatever to get more insight into into your own life you have to be okay with just taking time to figure things out and like gauge what the heck's going on well, whoever he was, he, I'm sure he, I'm sure he was an idiot because he's gonna look back when you're making millions of dollars and be like, "Damn, oh, she was singing about it's me." It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, like I said, same as Taylor Swift. I'm sure, like some of the people, are like, "How dare she say that about me?" Shit, she made millions off my, off my story. It's uh, all good. But no, nah, it, it also definitely lends to your attitude lately. The attitude change I've seen in you lately has been really positive. You're like. You really kind of turned it up a notch lately, so I'm really looking forward to the new music you got coming out soon. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, because when you go through these periods that I've seen over the last couple of years, the music that follows is usually pretty intense. It's pretty good. Um, so Thank I, you, Mike. Yeah. So, what you talking about? Maybe like even possibly playing around and doing a country song. What is next for you? What is uh kind of going into the future for you? Because uh, the last thing I see. What, the last thing you dropped was, what, the Forgiveness song? Um, yeah, that was the last song that I put out. And then, um, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. And then, oh, no, 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 no worries. But for the future, honestly, I think I'm trying to uh, start my own business. I think I'm thinking about getting my own label going because um, it's been on my agenda to, you know, get signed and I really want a record deal. But I think I have it in me to just kind of do it myself because, you know, I built my own home studio, which is where I produce and record the majority of my music. Some of it is like tracks off of YouTube. But the stuff that I take most seriously is the stuff that I hand make myself. So I figure bridge that together with business, get my own business going. And then I feel like that I can I can just go anywhere. The possibilities are endless, you know. So I'm really trying, starting to kind of kick it into high gear and like jumpstart really the beginning of my career because it's all just been self explore exploration and finding out who I am and trying to evolve and build a foundation as an as an artist. And now that I think I've got some of that figured out, enough of that figured out. I think I can start to capitalize on that and make some business centers. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can tell you from experience, and then also uh, from a number of uh, and lately I, I've talked to a lot of rappers for some of these first few episodes. Uh, they're mm-hmm. all good friends of mine, but uh, I've talked to a lot of people, and I'm still getting my kind of feet under me doing this whole podcast thing. I'm used to doing a lot of written and writing uh, interviews and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but one of the topics that seems to keep coming up on every episode is the whole label thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I, one person I I talked to, he signed to Sony music Asia. Um, so he Mm -hmm. does have a label, but it's almost more of a distribution type deal where they're kind of like helping him get his music out. Um, then it is like controlling him, telling him how to do his music. So it's a little different than most standard record deals. Uh, but the other two artists, um, and both of them are local. Uh, the other two artists, One's a Chef Carbo, who's a, a rapper, producer, uh, and everything, and he just moved out to the Bay Area, but he still comes back and forth. Oh, and the, nice. And the other goals, ones, goals, the, the other one's a more popular <laughs> rapper uh, named Kingpin Slim, who's from D.C., and uh, and both those have kind of made it to like a more national level than maybe yeah. you, have, you have, but you know, it's one of those things, like, what do you need a label for in 2018? Uh, distribution's nice. Because the internet. Yeah, exactly. Internet. Distribution's nice. Chance the but... rapper did it at all. Yeah, There's no. Chance, chance is always the chance is always the first name that comes up too. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah, but we don't really need it, right? Because like here you are, 2018, with a click of a button, you can reach a million people. The mm-hmm. only the only thing a label kind of helps you with is getting noticed. Like if you can't mm-hmm. get your if you can't get your own. Um, mm-hmm. But even today, like a lot of artists are out there, they're producing their own music, they're they're making their own music, and they're doing it at a pretty high level. You know, all mm-hmm. of us have access to these tools you know i went out mm-hmm. you know before i did this podcast i, I said you know what i'm not gonna half-ass it i'm not gonna just do it to do it i'm going to do it with the right equipment the right setup and and i want to sound good i don't want to sit there and have you know this show come off and sound real amateur so if you listen to the first and, and this episode will air probably about a week after we record it but mm-hmm. if, if you listen to some of uh the previous episodes and they all come off. I like to at least think they come off sounding somewhat professional, even though it's my first time really doing it. This, uh, this, yeah, yeah. this media and this platform. And, and as an artist, I, I'm guessing it's the same way. You know, you don't want to come off as all, and you know, you can look back on Selena's catalog on YouTube and stuff and where she's done covers and she's done some, uh, some original stuff as well. And you can see the evolution from the beginning to now of how much, you know, more professional everything looks and the more experience you to round back to you the more experience that you get i'm sure yeah there's not really much need for a label in 2018 there's not much need if you can sit there i mean it would be nice i don't really know how 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 things will play out because i do have you know other options where i could go in the direction of potentially you know a, a, a label but i don't know there's part of me that thinks that i should kind of just really try to do it by my own you know i don't i don't know why but it's just like let's see if i can do it let's there's really nothing wrong with that yeah do everybody it everybody wants it. to be their own boss right um yeah man and that that's exactly what it is i think 
And then also, also a hundred percent of the money, right? You don't want to split it with somebody when you're doing all the work. So it would be nice to keep to keep the uh, to keep all the profits. It would be nice. You always have Although to pay I'm somebody for like distribution and stuff like that, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody's in it for the money, but it's nice when you get it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I kind of heard what you kind of slipped in there. You're not in there for the money. Uh, and, and that's the best thing, you know, um, when people are just recording because they love what they do. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're passionate enough about what you do, which there's no doubt if you listen to your catalog and you listen to everything you've done from <laughs> playing, playing on, you know, oh. playing all your own music, uh, you know, I saw the one video where you like made your own beat, which was, you know, you developing into even another direction, you know, because because that's what it starts off. Right. Like back in the day when I first yeah. started doing web design and other stuff, you know, I didn't yeah. have any idea what I was doing. But you know what? I played with it. I played with it. And all of a sudden now I'm really good at, it, you know, yeah, man. So you got to start somewhere Isn't with a passion. Awesome? Yeah, with a passion. Isn't that, that dope? That's like the dopest. That's awesome. People are capable of so much like we can do anything that we feel like doing. It just takes a little bit of involved effort. Everybody's got to start somewhere. I mean, you look at some of the biggest producers on the planet, they didn't start by just all of a sudden going to the studio one day and throwing together a dope track. <laughs> nah, it was right, like a little started. teeny tiny keyboard in your mama's basement and that's right. it. Yeah. You know, push a button a couple of times. Oh, that sounds cool. Let me push a couple more. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look there. Cause uh, I'll tell you straight up, like I sat there and took, uh, yeah, a free loop, uh, that was available and a couple other free loops and I, and I blended this together and, and took some bass and like, I'm not a, I'm not a producer by any means. Uh, I'm decent with audio, um, much more yeah. than I have video, which is why all these podcasts are coming off audio to begin with at least. Um, plus it's just easier to get people on a phone than it is to get people on a video chat. Um, yeah. but you know, I, I did the, the intro and the outro for all the, for all the podcasts, you know, and, it's one of those things like you start off playing with it and all of a sudden, you know, hey, oh, that sounds pretty dope. <laughs> and, and you just learn. And yeah. especially, especially when it comes to your music, because you know what music sounds like. You know what good music sounds like. You've been doing this for a while. So, yeah, it's mm -hmm. just a natural progression mm -hmm. of you growing not only as as a person, but a, as an artist. You know? Yes. Yes. And most importantly, as a person, most importantly, because I get really I just get confused sometimes and the two kind of overlap. So I was going through a period where I was Selena George, but then I wasn't Selena, like, and I just forgot who I was. And that wasn't really healthy. So, you know, it's also good to separate yourself sometimes from your art, or it can completely consume you and drive you absolutely mad. Yeah, well, not to absolutely call myself mad. old, but you're 23. You yeah. Trust me, when I was 23, I was all over the map, too. Um, I, I yeah, was, you, is it crazy? Is it crazy? I mean, I, I, I will let people know a little behind the curtain. Selena's definitely crazy. She she's a wild wild person. Um, but but you, you know, have, I have my moments. You, I got my, I got my moments. Well, if anybody wants to go look on a, a, there's a certain YouTube video I just came across today of a day in the life of Selena George. So. <laughs> there there is no question about those moments, but um. Especially your little rap in that video uh, about your <laughs> about your tush and, and your other parts. Um, oh my god! I don't know if I should take that down or not. I don't. I don't, I don't think. Know how I don't. To... I don't think you should. I think. I think it's pretty. <laughs> I, just leave it there. It's authentic, right? Hey, it, world, it is who you. It hey, is who world, you are. I got multiple personalities. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, how much money did Nicki Minaj make off multiple personalities? So oh, there. You oh go. my god! There's oh. facts right mm. there. You don't have multiple personalities. You just have one slightly. Uh, energetic. Let's let's use the word energetic. Uh, slightly yeah. more energetic personality. Um, I'm a wild card. Yeah, I, I've seen you kind of come into a room and just kind of just just bounce. Just, just every <laughs> like, you you seem to always. I mean, I we all have our ups and downs, but I I've seen most of the time I've ever seen you. You just have a lot of energy. Um, That's that is that is very true. That is very true. So it's it seems pretty easy for you to come in the room, light up everybody with a smile, and be like, "Hey, I'm here." And you know, mm, thank this, you. It's this little. You. I just try to put out positivity. Yeah, it's just a little unassuming girl feeling. comes in and like just makes the whole room go bright. So that's definitely a good trait to have for your music and for your life in general, not yeah, just for thank music. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, most definitely. Um, 
And I did live up to my promise, everybody. I told her two years ago that when, whenever this, they talk about breaks, right? I, I, mm-hmm. I talked about this two years ago about possibly doing this, what I'm doing now. And then life mm-hmm. just, life just kind of got in the way for a little bit and got away from me. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, yeah, I lived up my promise. I got her on the show. I told her, I was like, hey, I was like, thank you for keeping to your promise because I totally appreciate that. And I appreciate you. I yeah, appreciate you having me. It's yeah, no really doubt. nice for me. And, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. Like, I don't just put people on because, oh, you know, Selena's my friend. Let me give her, you know, five minutes of fame. No, I put them on because I think the world really wants to see you. Like, I think I love giving people spotlight, but at the same time, you have to have some talent. You have to have some skill. I'm not going to sit there and put my name on the line for somebody that, you Right, know, you better. Yeah. And you better be able to walk the, the talk. So when I send people to, to you know, soundcloud.com slash Selena X George, like, <clears throat> I want people to like, oh, shit, I see what you're talking about. And will there's, there's no doubt. Away. And your YouTube link's a little longer for me just to shout out because it's like some big code. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks to YouTube for making everything difficult for everybody with, it, with their, I know. their URL. Please. It took me forever to, like, get just the uh, YouTube.com slash certified mag. But, All those ads. <clears throat> they made it even harder for that now. I don't know if you've noticed, but now, like, to get signed up as a YouTube, uh, to monetize YouTube, you have to have mm-hmm. at least 10,000 views. So I see people can get that probably after, like, maybe, you hope after, like, several episodes or something or several videos. Um, mm-hmm. But nobody can, like, just start off right now making money on YouTube like they used to. Like, before, you can be like, yeah, monetize my <laughs> thing. Go and add on my video. Go ahead. Yeah, because everyone's you, just doing you, it. So. You may even accidentally make 80 bucks. Um, yeah. Remember, remember one time my sister went on a, not to expose her too much, because she, she's actually not embarrassed by this at all, so I have to tell the story. But uh, <laughs> her and a friend one summer when they were in uh, high school went around, because uh, her friend mother worked for Verizon, up uh, higher up in Verizon, and they went around basically following the entire Jonas Brothers tour across oh, that sounds awesome. across the country so they were going to like they went pretty much i want to say i don't even know the number but they literally went to almost every stop during the summer of that tour oh, for, wow. like a, for like a yeah. good like month or two and then they took the video and put it up on youtube like just a little like fun haha this is us going on tour with the jonas brothers and yeah i i don't have the link offhand but i i know it's still available and still up there and she still makes a little bit of money off of it I mean, the first time yeah. she, she looked up at it, all of a sudden there was like 80 bucks sitting in her AdSense account just because she threw it up there. So, That's cool. You know, especially if you're not meaning to make money off of it. Back in the day, you used to really mm-hmm. be, be able to make money off YouTube. And now they're they're trying to make it such a business because of their creators' channels and their YouTubers, if you will, that I feel mm-hmm. sometimes like artists kind of get left <clears> behind <throat> because people such as yourself that are putting out stuff all the time, you mm-hmm. know, how do you make I'm money? definitely inconsistent with YouTube. Yeah, but it's, like, it's a great it's, platform. It's not the money for me. Yeah, I know. Nothing's about the money, but it's still a great platform. And it's nice when mm-hmm. you're putting in such work, if you can then all of a sudden turn around and be like, hey, here's an extra couple hundred bucks, because that can go a long way. That can That's true. That can help you, you know, print out flyers for something or send mm-hmm. out promotional material for something to help get out your music and get the word out. So. You know, that mm-hmm. little that little extra money here and there that you weren't, especially you weren't making it to make money, that's always a little bonus that you used to be able to get that now you have to work yeah. a little, little bit extra harder for. And just for, yeah. the, just for the record, YouTube, I am trying to make money. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a business. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's talk a little bit about some of the music you've put out uh, other than your Vanity Fair hip hop album, or uh, hip hop track that you put out. Which which was dope. Mm-hmm. I, I listened to it. I, I started laughing at first because I'm not used to hearing you, of all people, start spitting rhymes. But but I thought it was cool. I, but I I know when I come with it. I was just feeling. So I think that song. Um, I, I guess wrote you're it little, but you're a little, you're a little badass. Like you, you come in with a such bold voice. It's like. Oh, I know. I got it's just because of it's because life, man. I was like at a party the night before, and it was just like people were just going on me and like side dissing me and I was like okay you know what I got something for all you guys so I put it in a song and then I was like as a matter of fact let me go deeper I remember in high school when I had no friends and I was just like oh, I heard that yeah I heard that part. you know and then it, I realized but I'm being such a such a narcissist by kind, thinking that kind of I, a look you know, at me so now type like, track. 
Yeah, so it's just kind of like me playing with myself and like playing with other people and the idea that we live in the age of narcissism. I honestly think that like narcissism is a disease nowadays and everyone's so vain and it's like, get over yourself. Like look in the mirror, be real with yourself. You're human. You, you do the same human things that everybody else does. So nothing separates you from other people. It's kind of 50, except- 50 though. You still have to have confidence in yourself. Oh, call you have a confidence in like cockiness. My it's a thin line. Tell me. It's, it's a thin line and it's hard for people to somebody go like completely different things. So you just gotta be careful. You know, you just gotta be careful. Most definitely not. I, I, I think it's a thin line. Careful. I think all of us do. I, get it. I mean, for a yeah. long time, uh, I know a lot of people would say Mike is cocky or Mike is an asshole or, or this and that. And, you know, and it never meant for me to come across that way, but it's just, you know, I'm blunt. Yeah, sure. Of course I'm, not. Of I'm blunt course and I care a lot about what I do. And when you, when you have those yeah. combinations, sometimes you can be a little bit, you know, rub people the wrong way sometimes, I guess is probably the best yeah. way to put it. But, but when you believe in yourself, you know, yeah, beyond you, a reasonable you have to. doubt. And when you believe in yourself, other people will believe in you. That can come across. And, you know, the right people will support you who, uh, who you know, really are about what you're doing. And the ones who don't, that it's just brush the dirt off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I can, I can only imagine being a, a female uh because I guess guys have a little bit easier, right? Like we don't have as many stereotypes to have to live up to or stigmas that we have to overcome. Whereas a female, well, you have to be ladylike or you have to be this or you have to be that. And I hate and then, that. I totally hate that because yeah. on a personal level, I mean, just in life, you know, I can see how people already put expectations on me because I am a woman and because I'm black. So it's like I met with a lot of, you know, just preconceived notions from people who don't even know me and my favorite thing about music one of my favorite things is being able to cut through all that crap and just be like no i'm selena this is who i am this is what i mean and yeah i don't care what your opinions are of me i'm going to express myself in a way that i feel i I, that i want to and um that can be as come across however it can come across however it can be unladylike it can be uncouth it can be it can be ladylike sometimes it can be very proper but there's definitely no black or white you know it's just i can tell you firsthand as as somebody raising a daughter uh, it's a it's a a challenge i mean she's only nine now but (laughs) every day you know i tell her all the time the same thing that you tell growing-ups because you have to learn at an early age like Sometimes she'll come home and she'll be like, you know, so-and-so doesn't like me or so-and-so uh, didn't like something oh, I, di- I did, yes. right? And as, as a yeah. father, you're, you're kind of over-the-top protective of, of your baby girl, and as I'm sure your dad is of yours, of you. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've had those jokes before. I, like, I've joked about telling your dad about something. And um, don't worry, Dad. She's a saint sometimes. Yeah. Um, but – you know, like I, I joke, I, I joke about that, but in all seriousness, you know, it's hard because, you know, I'll tell her all the time. I was like, she's like, why don't people sometimes, you know, because every kid goes through bullying and everything else. And, you, you know, your your hip hop song talked about, mm-hmm. you know, look at me now. Right. Because um, you guys didn't mm-hmm. didn't respect me or didn't treat me nice when you knew me back then or whatever uh, in hip hop and high school and everything else. And, um, mm-hmm. and my daughter's not quite up to that level yet, but she still has like people bully her or something like that. And I'm like. I tell her every day, all the time, religiously. It's like, if you believe in your uh, yourself and you're confident in yourself, other people will want to be your friend. Because everybody, yeah. wants, everybody wants to be friends with a person that's confident, right? Because they look at them and they're like, because everybody has their own insecurities. I don't care if you're a musician or if you're everybody. a person like, yeah. Everybody. Myself, everybody. We all have our own insecurities. Uh, I mean, I'm perfect, but... Uh, no, not at all. I'm I am far it's from lies. Far. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I, and people know I am far from perfect. Um, but everybody has their own insecurities, and you know, you tell somebody, and you know, come back to you a little bit. Like you tell somebody, like, hey, it, you know, like you see that person in the room that everybody wants to be friends with. It's because they believe in themselves and they're confident, and you're kind of like, well, I want whatever they got. That's what I want. So you kind of want to hang mm-hmm. out with them because you hope it kind of rubs off on you. It, but it all comes from within. That is all internal. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you look at some of the, the hottest artists in the game today. Like all of them have flaws. Like I don't mm-hmm. care if it's Jay Z. Like Jay Z just made an entire album talking about his flaws and how he cheated on his wife and how everything else. And he just put it out there for the whole world to see. Um, yeah. So artists more than anybody have flaws. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh cut off his ear, and now his paintings, you know, centuries later, go for more money than anything on on the planet. Um, yeah. I think America in general, the world, the world too, but I think America more than anything always goes for the people with flaws. Like they always pay more attention to it. Um, whether it's because tra- it's human it's and you human. can relate to it. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's human. Yeah, exactly what you yeah. said. Um, so showing people in your music, you know, your flaws or your hurt, if that's a better way to put it sometimes, like when, when somebody breaks your heart or you're angry or something didn't go your way or you didn't get the, right. you know, the promotion, like, and I'm not just talking about you, but I'm talking about in general, like the promotion at work that you didn't get or uh, right. just something didn't go your way, right? The, mm-hmm. I don't care what artist you are, like, those usually are the best songs. Like, when something like that happens to an artist, above all, you guys have a way of turning that around, like, putting your anger, putting your sadness, putting your passion into your music. And it, it from a fan's perspective, it's great, right? Because like, that's when we're like, wow, look how great that song was. But you do kind of got to look at it sometimes and be like, man, I feel kind of bad that they're going through this much hurt, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's a great... Well, you got, you have to be real with yourself. You know, you have to confront the issues that come up as they do. And... You know, if art is your medium of expression, channel all those emotions into something and it really becomes something positive that in turn affects other people in the same way. Yeah, exactly what I was trying to say, the medium. I couldn't think of the word, so thank you. Um, but yeah, I no, got you. I know. Uh, <laughs> but but no, like, yeah, no, you're, you're so right. Like that medium is such a great way to get it out. Uh, your therapy, if you will, right? Totally, totally. Totally. So that and like Stranger Things. Netflix. <laughs> I will. I will get onto that eventually. That is on the list of a million things that I have to watch. Um, but I am a boy and I am a jerk and I watch too much superhero stuff. So um, <laughs> as soon as Marvel and DC stop putting out all these great shows, then then I'll, I'll I'll get on some of the other stuff. I got that and Ozarks. I have to watch too. So. So Ozark is pretty good. Yeah. I started watching Black Mirror because everybody talked about it, but I just wasn't such a fan. But maybe it picks up later. I don't know. I wasn't into the most recent season, so don't always believe the hype. Like it wasn't that. It wasn't that great. It wasn't that great. I'm one of those people. It doesn't matter if it's a movie or TV series. I don't ever believe the hype. Like I might watch it yeah. because everybody does, but I usually have different opinions. There's a lot of mm-hmm, movies. I, there's a lot of movies that like critics were like, "Oh, that's the worst movie ever," and I go watch it. And I was like, "That was pretty good." Like, right? yeah. I, I, I would like it. Like, I remember, what was it? Suicide Squad. Like Suicide, Suicide Squad got the worst reviews I think I've ever seen for a movie. And mm-hmm. me and my wife went in and watched it. And we both came out of it like, like we could see like some of the flaws that the critics were talking about. But mm-hmm. I, thought, I thought it was a pretty fun movie to watch. Like, thought the Harley Quinn character was awesome. It. I thought Will Smith's character I'm... was awesome. I enjoyed it, mm-hmm. yeah. And then the Spanish dude. Harley Quinn. Yeah, it. yeah. She that movie made Harley Quinn a household name again. So the promotion and the and the merchandise from that, I'm sure Warner Brothers was like, "You can hate it all you want. Uh, we just made." But a lot of we money. cashed in on you. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, like you said, it's sure not did. about the money, but it is about the money. Yeah, uh, and especially with major companies. It definitely, it definitely made Buku bucks out that one. That's why they keep making all those. DC keeps making all those other movies that are crap, like the Batman versus Superman and stuff like that. Um. Though Justice League wasn't as bad as people thought it was. Like, I thought that was pretty good, too. Um, but I'm always into, like, those big ensemble-like type movies. I like, because there's so many characters you can kind of latch on to. There's just not enough time with each one for you to kind of get like, oh, that's my guy. Um, mm-hmm. and, and just, I'm going to give you a heads up now, because I hope I have you back several more times on these uh, episodes. Um, oh, think- for sure. Things do go sideways on these podcasts. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a conversation, not an interview. I'm not going to ask Selena what her favorite color is. I don't really care. Um, green. You and, my da- green. you and my daughter both. Uh, <laughs> so there's two people in the world that, I, that, that aren't Irish that like green. Um, only Irish people I usually hear say green. Um, 
and may, mainly that's just because they like drinking on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna try to get in trouble and people call me racist, but Irish like to drink. That's no. just that, that, that's just what they do. Uh, I'm slightly I'm part Irish, so I can say that. Um, I'm also a mutt, though, much like yourself. Like I'm a little bit from everywhere, so. Um, I will say, uh, actually, you know, kind of like an interview like question though, because I meant to ask you this earlier. What were some of your mm-hmm. influences? Like, what what kind of in- influence inspires Selena George? Oh man, so that's a good question. Like, what first got you what singing? In- what first got me into music? Yeah, what what first got you into singing oh. music? Yeah, in general, like what what's like the first time you like sat down? Like, I want to do that. So the first time that I guess I just did it you know, spontaneously without really thinking about it was when I was a kid, uh, piano lessons. I started taking piano lessons when I was like eight or nine and I would write songs just for fun. But it wasn't until I came back home from college, my freshman year of college, it was a very, very difficult year for me. So I came home, um, had been in a lot of trouble and like a lot of unfortunate circumstances. So music, I was, you know, I hit rock bottom completely. And in order to save myself, you know, I, I started doing music and that pretty much, I started my recovery, my healing process of my soul from that point really forward. And ever since then, it's just been music for me. It's and the, the inspirations come daily from that, like from life, from conversations with people. Like this conversation we're having right now is hella inspiring to me. Um, it well, can you. be anything, can be anything. Yeah, yeah. So, so any just about anything. So you get inspiration out of life. Uh, that's obvious. But uh, were there any like artists or anything that kind of like inspired you? Artists, um, Stevie Wonder, Janae Aiko, Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean's a big one. Um, and then who else? I really, really, really like uh, Beyonce. I mean, Beyonce is everything to me, and I love this woman. And she inspires me, like, when someone like Beyonce can come out and say, I've had my heart broken, I've been through X amount of pain, and still be as strong as she is, that to me is incredible. And I love her for that. So, yeah, she's she's a big one. But um, also Michael Jackson, Motown artist, uh, uh, Barry Gordy. I'm surprised Michael wasn't the first person you said, because if you go to, I think it's your... <laughs> It's one of your pages. Oh, SoundCloud, and he's right there. Yeah, he's like right there at the top. Yeah, like that's your that's your cover picture. So I got posters of him all over my wall. He's like Michael Jackson is like a big brother to me. I feel like I grew up with him in a way because I literally did. I remember and that's the always first amazing. Time I saw that's always amazing. To me. Yeah, he's uh, he's when a younger person <laughs> such as yourself, it just shows you that just shows you how timeless an artist is. Like when a younger person exactly. such as yourself, because he's been passed away now for God. God, what is it? it's. It's been, uh, I want to say, eight or nine years, maybe. I was going to say, yeah, what, 2008, 2010? Some... Yeah, at least eight years. Now, least eight now, years. now I'm going to have to look this up. But <laughs> uh, great thing about technology, right? Like you can look up something in, in just a, a quick second. And I don't want to, like, you know, say it wrong. So 2009. Uh, so, yeah, he's been gone now eight and a half years, uh, June 2009. Uh, you know, God bless his soul. Despite what you think about, like, like, yeah, despite what like people think about is his uh his public persona, uh, his music is timeless. Um, you know, I grew up on Michael Jackson more so than you, because <laughs> like that was my that, <laughs> that, that, that that was my era. You know, uh, I remember yeah. especially like in the eighties and nineties, like. When Michael Jackson song came on, like everybody stopped. They're like, "Wait, what?" The mic, you know. I I, st- I still start wilding. I could hear it at work, you know, because it's just timeless music at work. Or yeah. I could hear it anywhere. It just picks me right up. My favorite song um, is actually the Jackson Five. It's by the Jackson Five. It's my favorite song in the whole entire world. It's "Blame It on the Boogie" by the Jackson Five. And yeah. this song, there is magic. There's in all all music possesses a certain quality you know, of just something, because you're literally breathing life into something. You know, music is, it is, is life, it's movement, it's vibes. But Blame It on the Boogie, it just, no, it's like, it's my song. That's just my song. That is my song. And it, yeah, 
I mean, there's, there's so many timeless classics from the Jackson Five to Michael's early career. Like, like I'll still hear uh, <clears throat> "Beat It," and I'll I'll still be like excited when I hear it because I remember. Yeah. So, that song I kind of have more of like a childhood memory of. Like I remember when I was little, that just was like the track that always got me. You know, I remember the video yeah. where he was dancing on the different like lights and like it just so it, cool. it, it all it always captured so me. So cool. whenever whenever I hear that track, like my my brain just goes back to being a child. Um, yeah. And you know, you talk about Michael. You talk. I had a conversation. Uh, one of the last shows I recorded where we were talking about uh, uh, Biggie, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Mm -hmm. And we're, Michael's a little different because he had an entire career before he passed away. You know, mm -hmm. whereas Biggie, he didn't have time to kind of go down, right? He just he made a couple mm -hmm. timeless classics, and he never had a ch chance to like every artist. If you perform long enough, there's a track where you're like it's watered down, right? It's not it's not going to be as good as the other tracks that everybody remembers, you know? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I'm more hip-hop oriented, so most of my references are usually hip-hop, but if you look at Eminem, like, he just came out with an album, and half that album is fire, but the other half of it, you're kind of like, maybe you made too many tracks this time, maybe you should have cut it back. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't um, peeped, okay, I haven't it, peeped yet. It, but it's not, it's not bad, it's not bad Eminem, but it's not his best, and when you put such a level yeah. up, like, Michael Jackson, his his catalog is so timeless. But there's a few yeah. there's a few songs in there you kind of especially towards the end when he was trying to like experiment a little bit, I guess you would say. Um yeah. trying to like evolve his sound into cuz you know, there's some songs out there especially after he passed away that came out and were released post uh I always butcher this word, humorously um uh humorous uh, I can never say it, but post death um trying to be a little mm -hmm. a little smarter than I am, but uh, a little a little post death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, post death, where he came, you know, with Akon and Justin Timberlake and some and some other stuff that were kind of like mixed together, and some of them were great vibes, and some of them were like, man, these uh, artists go what great, and some of them like dude, those collaborations should have never ever happened. Like that's just not right. Like you can't you can't put. <laughs> it you know, happens sometimes. I put out music that I'm like, oh god, ew, this is just why why, but you know, you got to take the L's with the with the dubs. But yeah, I, it's a, I mean, yeah, music music all that about all the yeah. way. Well, music's all about feeling. That's one thing I would always say. Music's about feeling. And what you mm -hmm. feel today, you might not feel tomorrow, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. What you record today, you might not be feeling tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Like I said, like, like, like Eminem, like time. he put out that time. one album and then he came out with the next album saying the last album was crap. <laughs> uh, you yeah. Know? So, you know, even the, the best artists can always look back and be like, <laughs> yeah. The, the best artists can always look back and be like, yeah, that wasn't my best work. Um Yeah. Cause you're, you're, it's, it's humbling. It's like just because you're an artist doesn't mean you're hot-ish. You know what I mean? Well, I also just find that you're your hardest critic. Hmm? I also find that you're your hardest critic. Like you're the harshest critic. Like you judge your music That's true. more than anybody else before anybody else ever hears it. You're the biggest judge of it. So. Right, right. That's true. That's really true. You'd probably think I was crazy if you sat there and saw how many times. Like the interviews that we do, the conversations are completely unedited. What happens between the time I, I hit record and I say hello to everybody and the time that I say goodbye to you, that's what, uh -huh. go, that's what goes. Like I'll, I'll clean up the audio a little bit, but, but that, yeah. that is what goes onto the interview or conversation that you see on the podcast when it gets released. From, yeah, yeah. And I, I always send it to people and I always let them listen to it. Before I, I publicly uh, oh, and uncut, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and well, no, I'll send you the mastered version completely. But 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 what you hear from the beginning, like you can pretty much skip from the beginning of the show to the end of the show because you already know what you said. There's nothing cut out of it. If, mm -hmm. if we if we slip a couple curse words in there, so be it. I've had a couple. Podcasts. I'm trying not to. I mean, you, you, don't, you, don't, to. you don't you don't have to. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to. You can drop you can drop whatever you want. Um, okay. It, it's a podcast. This isn't going on uh, Disney Radio. Um, <laughs> but. You know, you try not to be overboard, right? Like, you're not going to say F this, F that, F this, F that, but... No, of course not. I mean, I got to conduct and carry myself in a certain way. <laughs> but certain artists definitely do. Like, like the first interview Off I did... The the, yeah, the first interview I did, like, the F-bomb was fine. And it wasn't yeah. It wasn't like, hey, F this, F that. It's just the way people talk sometimes. And, and I love how authentic my interviews are because I'm not trying to have Selena George pretend she's somebody she's not. I don't think fans want to see that i don't think people that are just getting new to your music want to see that they already yeah. know they already know who you are if they listen to enough of your music like you right. know not to keep going back to, to hip-hop but that's just kind of who i've interviewed so far <laughs> and don't get me wrong i mean i got an actor i'm interviewing soon i got this is going to be business people actors everything so it's, it's not just about music yeah. 
I'm just interviewing kind of people that I'm really comfortable with to begin with, just to get yeah. my, own, my own legs under me. But, you know, if I listen to a Selena George song, which <clears throat> you don't curse in your music a lot anyway, like you may say shit or, or something like that, but you're not really cursing a lot in your music. But, mm-hmm. and I've heard a couple of F-bombs, but for the most part, your music's kind of pretty clean. Um, yeah. And that's just who you are. That's how you talk. Like, I've listened to you talk. You don't curse overly, like, a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, I just I don't try to be someone or something that I'm not. I definitely try to watch my language. But sometimes I'm just like, well, yeah, it, it. yeah, it comes out, it comes <laughs> out. Um, but I just want people to be authentic. Is kind of what I'm saying. Like, it, it, this, yeah, that's that's the most important thing. One of my and, biggest inspirations was always, uh, and I don't I don't listen to it as much as as I used to because I don't have the time. But and mainly because his show is way too long. But the Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. the Joe Rogan show, like Joe Rogan experiment, like he would interview these people but he wouldn't interview he was just like like you and i right now we're just kind of kicking it just talking about music talking about life um it's just a conversation so you kind of have guidelines where you're trying to promote people's stuff and you're trying to get them in there because that's the reason they're on your show to begin with um but i like that as conversation i like that people can kind of just vibe and and people can have this conversation and when people listen to it when hopefully they enjoy it because they're not like oh man you know, go get Selena George's album. Go get Selena George's album. Go, go get this track. Go get yeah, this no, track. that's and that's not even what I wanted. I would want it to be. I want people to know who you dialogue are. Dialogue is is easy. It's natural, and also, you know, the best thing about conversating or talking to people is you can even just learn more things about yourself that you didn't really even know, depending on where the conversation goes. Because it's like you ask me some questions that I haven't thought about in a while, and you know, just in kind of listening because I try to listen to myself or watch myself as I think there's this book I'm reading. It's called the power of now. And it teaches you to like watch the thinker and like, just kind of take yourself out of, mm-hmm. out of your own head and like, you know, gauge your thought process. But it's like, I kind of, there are things that I don't really know and haven't discovered yet that just by way of talking about it and, you know, having the right, the right questions come up, I'm learning. So it's, yeah, I mean, I don't want to sit here and be like, I'm the best ever. Listen to my music and the, this bougie, 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 whatever. I feel like you get more I fans. What you're I, you get more fans when people realize who you really are, not who they think exactly. you are. Exactly. Exactly. And like you said, you don't do this for the money. You know, it's a benefit if you get it. Obviously, everybody wants to be rich and successful. And they mostly just not have to worry about bills. Whether I don't care, like if you're a billionaire or you just have a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank, you just don't want to have to worry about bills, right? Just sustainability. Yeah. I just want to be able to like live comfortably. Exactly. Live your life without that's, worry. That's stress really free. It. Stress free. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this world has enough stresses. Money does, shouldn't have to be one of them. Um, but yeah, like I want people to know who Selena George is. I want people to know, you know, what makes you tick. And sometimes you can't really get that in the interview. So um, yeah. I can sit there and be like, hey, you know, when's your new album come out? Hey, when's your new song come out? Hey, you know, how did you feel about this? And if those kind of questions come up in a, in a conversation, that's great. And obviously I am going to 100 percent, you know, go in afterwards and and I'm going to get all the links and put them in all the show notes because I, I want people to find Selena George. Like I didn't put you on just because you're my friend, put you on because you're dope. And I, I thank you. Yeah, and I want people to know about your music. I wanted people to know where it's coming from. I want people to know where you're coming from. And yeah. So I love, I love talking to you. It's been way too long. Um, it has. I'm we, so glad you had me on the show. Cause we used to have like. these, con- we used to have these conversations like off air, like, and I'm, people know I'm a bartender and like we would sit there and Selena would come up and we just like end of the day, we just start kicking it about something stupid. Um, so. And full circle and just, yeah. it's full circling back. Yeah, so, circle. As, as I sit here driving around, uh, around, around the path, God, I love life. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, this is definitely uh, great to have you on. Um, and I won't hold you up much longer. Uh, I try to keep these episodes to around an hour, and we're about 48 minutes or so in. So I'll only ask you a couple more things. Because um, like yeah. I said, I want to have you on again and again when you got new music coming out, when you got – New life experiences coming out. I'd love to have you on on the show a few more times. Um, because I know there's you're you're not exactly the quiet type sometimes. Um, oh so, no, I so, can be pretty elusive, but I tend to be mostly boisterous. Yeah, and 
if there's certain reasons for you to be talking about subjects, you can go on and on and on and on. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we could probably mm-hmm. we could probably just do an hour on just t- your love of Michael Jackson. Um, oh, totally. <laughs> you know, things get sidetracked, but you know, we were talking about your inspirations. We were talking about what kind of like you know you mentioned Stevie Wonder. I don't hear that too much from somebody your age, which is pretty cool. Um, and I was kind of talking about the timeless stuff, you know um uh-huh. biggie michael uh tupac uh you know you go back to artists like stevie wonder and um especially like that whole motown era um uh-huh. you, met, you mentioned you're, you know you're a young black girl growing up and i'm sure in your household as in because <clears throat> i grew up in a neighborhood where it was a, a heavily black neighborhood and i'd go into my friend's neighbor friend's houses and um that's what you would hear, like just the music playing in the background of like mm-hmm. 70s and, and 80s and 60s even mm-hmm. uh, of uh, <clears throat> this yeah. this this old R&B soul. Um, I say Motown, yeah. but it was from everywhere. Yeah. Um, but and my are, grandparents raised me, so like it was definitely, it was all, oh, yeah. you know, like Ivy Brothers, Earth, Wind & Fire. Like they, they got me hip as a little baby, you know. And, you know, I didn't want to say that before, but, like, now that you mention it, like, if I listen to some of your music, I can see that influence. It's there. It's, like, there's Especially the Earth, Wind, and Fire one. Like, subconsciously. I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, my God. Love like, September, if I'm ever is low, and I put it on September, and just, like, the first, just intro- that trumpet introduction, it was, like, da 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 and it, like, you know, it just... I feel better. I just feel better. It's funny because there was a better. concert they had at the, I keep wanting to say Verizon, but the Capital One Arena. Um, yeah. A couple months ago. Uh, it may even be back as far as like September, but sometime in the last few months they were there. And oh, I hope so. I need to see them live. Well, no, the I'm talking about in the past. They were just there. I'm sure they'll come back. But, you know, they were there. And one of my uh, friends who's also a bartender in the industry, um, and not to call him out on air, but he's not the most hip like white guy. Um, okay, let's but, oh, but him, totally cool. him and his, him and his <laughs> him and his boss, uh, they worked at a restaurant that worked that was down the street from where I was working downtown. Um, yeah, they went to the show and they came in afterwards, and I was joking with them. I was like, "Man, what do you know about Earth, Wind, and Fire?" Because he's like this. I don't know exactly how old he is, but late twenties, early thirties, um, mm-hmm. just like white guy and. And he doesn't carry himself as like the most like hip, I guess is probably the, the polite way to put it. Um, mm-hmm. Though I'm sure I'm sure he listens to everything. I'm not judging anybody because I know a long time ago you cannot judge people like uh, what they look like. Yes, sir. Um, I guess no, sir. Nobody would probably guess. How, nobody do probably do ever that. guess how much hardcore hip hop I grew up on. Oh, if you just look at me, because now that I live out in the suburbs, but uh, <laughs> but it's it's funny because like. I asked him, and then all of a sudden he came, like he came in before the show, and he didn't really know anything. And then they came back after the show is probably what I, I should have said. And then they came back mm-hmm. after, and all of a sudden he's like humming the songs, he's singing all the songs. He didn't know any of them before the show, like his boss mm-hmm. did, and he thought it was a cool thing to like go out to a concert for a night because he's like, you know, hey, his boss got tickets to the show, let's go. And then he came back, and he was just such a fan, and it was so and like, yeah, man. I tell people like Earth, Wind, and Fire, like it gets your you. Life. I remember Change listening to, and this is way before you, but I remember listening to Donnie Simpson in the morning. And every morning before I'd go to school, this is way back when yeah. I was in high school, um, before you were born. Uh, like every every morning I'd get up and, and go to school, and Donnie, I'd have to listen to the radio while I'm getting ready in the morning. And back in the day, WPGC, and Donnie Simpson would be on in the morning. They always play all this Earth, Wind, and Fire, and, mm-hmm. and it would just get my day started right, like. I wasn't the best kid in high school. I missed a lot of days, and I was driving my my mom crazy. I'm sure, um, but mm-hmm. yeah. But I mean, we all we all develop and all grow. Um, mm-hmm. but some of us are a pain in the ass when we're younger. Mom, I'm sorry. I was. Yeah, mom, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like when the days I did get up and go, it's probably should say, uh, yeah, Donnie Simpson would play it, and like, man, you just hear Earth, Wind, and Fire, and how could you not be in a good mood walking out of the house after listening to that? Right, right. So I definitely see some of that influence in some of your music, you know. Um, you got any new music coming out soon? I do. I have, like, a catalog of a million songs that I've pretty much been rotating through. 
that I really want to release. But it's funny because I'm on a completely different page now than I have been the last few weeks, days even. So I'm kind of just, um, as opposed to just putting out a song here, a song there, a song there, I think I'm trying to work on uh, some sort of project, you know, that just makes more sense and is a more complete reflection of kind of the point that I've gotten to um, now, today, like where I am now, as opposed to I was going through so much shit and just like trying to recover myself by putting out music and having it be a therapeutic thing. You know, I want to put out a project where it's, it just makes sense. So probably, you know, in the next couple of months, I'll have something like really, really something that I've thought about just on a deeper level um, that people can actually kind of see where, where I've, what I've been through and where I've come to. Um, so I think I'm going to do an EP. I want to release an EP project and have that come out in the next few months. So that is something to look forward to and hopefully that I can stick to. That'll be incentive for me to stick to as well. <clears throat> well, I mean, you say stick to, but I think as somebody who's kind of seen you grow over the last couple of years and like I said, you were doing this music before I ever came across you, but as somebody who's seen you grow before uh, the last couple of years, I think <clears throat> you need, like we were talking about before, you need breaks sometimes in the music industry or you'll go crazy. But it also, every time you take a break, you have new stories to tell when you come back to it. Mm -hmm. um, I've mm -hmm. seen so many artists like disappear for, you know, like I said, you disappeared for a few months. That was your break. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen mm -hmm. artists disappear for years and they come back with, they don't come back until they have a story to tell. You know, you, yeah. you, yeah. you're grinding because you're trying to make it on the way up and yeah. you have to, yeah. because you, can, you can't, you can't slow down or people will lose you. Right. Um, yeah. We're yeah. talking about social media and how easy it is, it is to reach people. And, uh, I definitely hope after people hearing this that you'll you'll get a lot more listeners and followers as as time goes on. I think so. This has been the this has been like a very good intro for you, Mike. I I feel empowered, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, I hope people listen more to the podcast too. Starting it off brand new is, and raw. Like no matter how many people follow me online, it's still kind of hard to get people to fit something else in their busy schedule. You know, you were talking mm -hmm. about we were talking about the TV shows and like I I have so many that I watch now. In what little time I have, you know, because I have mm -hmm. a wife, a kid, a job, you know, and mm -hmm. then a business <laughs> um, to fit in this time. And so, you know, you're asking somebody to put a new medium into their in their lives. You know, even my friends mm -hmm. are like, hey, have you listened to any of the new shows? And they're like, oh, yeah, I've been meaning to get to it. I um, mean, these are people that love you, right? They're not trying to be jerks about it, but it, it's a mm -hmm. lot to listen to. It's a lot to in the world to pay attention to. Um, you know, you look at the news cycle, everything changes 24 hours. Everybody's talking about one story one day and the next story, next day, they don't even talk about the other story. They're talking about something brand new, you know, yeah. it's like Hurricane yeah. Harvey, Hurricane Irma, Las Vegas, Puerto Rico, like all these stories keep coming across and people forget about the last one. Um, yeah. so, so it's kind of hard when you're putting out a podcast or new music or whatever to get people to like realize you're there. Um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you don't want to half-ass put out stuff. So if, if you're going to put it out you might as well have a story to tell. You might as well have something. That, right. Because if they do right. listen to it, you want them to be blown away. You want them to be like, oh, man, I can't believe I missed so much. Let me go back and listen to the other stuff right. I might have missed. You know, I'm right. hoping, like, I don't plan on a lot of people hearing the first 20 podcasts. You know, if I get any kind of traction whatsoever, that's great. You know, and the more mm -hmm. bigger artists I, I, I interview, that's great for people like yourself, right? Because if I interview uh, a Kingpin Slim or a Concept who have a little bit of a following, um, mm -hmm which concept came out uh, as we're recording this on the 12th. Uh, he came out today. That episode's available now. Um, and then the next one coming out will be King Kingpin Slim and then, then yourself after that in order. Um, mm -hmm. So I believe you'll be episode five, which is, you know, great. You're one of the very first ones I've recorded. So thank you for that. Um, that was great. Um, but, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to reach out and I wanted to get, get a hold of you and, um, but like I said, it's a medium. And so the more people that get a hold of you, the more people that love you. It's kind of hard to fit new stuff in. But yeah. it helps. It helps every time I get a bigger artist because then everybody goes back and they listen to some of the other stuff they may have missed. And, you know, or they'll put it in their car and they'll repeat the list. And the list will just keep playing from one episode to the next to the next, whether they're on the train listening to, the, to their uh, 
their phone or you know device or if they're listening to it in the car or whatever the case is you know so that's one thing i love about doing with up and coming artists is it gives you guys a chance to to be heard um i love giving that spotlight to people people have always gave me that love back um you're you don't really know too much about this i kind of told you in the past a little bit about it but i used to have a magazine called pure style and pure style mm -hmm. was started in 2007 and it ran for a number of years it would have hiatuses where it come and go and then i've done it a couple other projects like ambition lifestyle and dcxiv since then um and some sports stuff too but certified is very much pure style 2.0 this is me getting back to my roots me getting back to doing the stuff that i love talking to artists that that I think should get a spotlight and should get a chance to shine. And not because, like I said, not because I know you, but because, you know, you're damn good and you're dope. Um, so I want people to see Selena George. I want people Thank to know you. Selena George. I want people to, to yeah. care to care about Selena George. And, and, yeah, maybe I'm getting content out of this too. I guess that's one way to look at it as well. Like, hey, you know, I'm giving Mike another show. That's great. Um, but my my focus is you know and i joked earlier it's about the money but it, it it's also about you know enjoying what i do you know love love what you do that's one of my big hashtags uh love what you do and it's important too yes yeah and for i for sure i'm now getting back to doing what i love to do and it's so great that you're getting back to doing what you love to do because you know like you said take yeah. your, take your break in music but it's time yeah. to get back and grind. And if you disappear for too long when you're up and coming, yeah, you get kind of like, I think what I was kind of full circle going back to is that it's like a needle in the haystack. So yes, you're one click away from everybody, but there's so there's also a million other artists that are one click away from everybody. And you got to give people a reason to, to click on Selena George versus clicking on so-and-so that nobody else has ever heard of. So um, <clears throat> I'm hoping I can help a little bit in that aspect of getting people to know Selena. And mm -hmm. I would highly encourage everybody to go and watch some of these YouTube videos. Uh, Definitely. If, if you ever really want to know her, that day in the life one is pretty funny. It's it's both comedic and also, you know, pretty cool because you get to see a little bit of everything she does behind the scenes. Um, and let me let me tell people right now, she's not acting. <laughs> <laughs> she's not she's not acting. This isn't like I'm not. It's all real. Yeah, I'm really it's not just crazy. It's not scripted. My name is actually an anagram for alien, which is like a very interesting fact about me. Because I think it pretty much sums up a lot of my, a lot of my being. That right there, like you rearrange letters in my name, spells alien. Did you well, think? you are a lot. It makes more, sense. <laughs> you're you're a lot more normal than you think you are. Um, <laughs> and you know, I would definitely like. I'll put the link in the show notes because, like I said, it's too long for people to like read out loud of your YouTube yeah. your YouTube page. But um, you can go back to when you were playing. <clears throat> I always forget what the name of that instrument's called, like the little guitar. The ukulele. Oh, that is a ukulele. I thought it was something different. Uh -huh. but, um, like yeah, you were, you were even playing that for a long time. Um, all your music came off of that as like the background, which was pretty cool. Um, and then you got the acoustic guitar. You know, I wish, I mean, we have a little bit more time, but I wish, like, I had a lot more time to talk to you about this because you are so diverse. Like, you can play so many, like, you're talking about coming up with piano, you, you play the guitar, yeah, you play the piano. Um, is that kind of like, was that forced upon you as a kid or did you just want to play it all? Um, and, and you know what, in the beginning, it kind of was. Well, no, I won't say it was forced, but it was encouraged. Like, my grandparents, they they raised me the first eight years of my life um and they just wanted me to have every opportunity that I could you know they wanted to give me everything possibilities be endless for you little black girl in America like you can do whatever you want so one of those things that they wanted for me was music they wanted music to be a core part of me me learning and growing up coming up in the world so I took piano lessons and at first I really you know struggle with it but then it was I loved it you know I play competitions I'd win competitions and write my own pieces and compose you know my own music um and that really opened my mind it gave me confidence it gave me an edge you know which is something that I could do that I was pretty good at and that I loved and from that love later developed into something that I take so seriously and it's like such a, an important piece of, of me like without that piece 
I don't know. Without, I wouldn't be the same artist that I am. You know, it would suck to me if I was just someone who could who just sang, or if I was just someone who could write. But the fact that I can, you know, play instruments a little bit too, it's just like it's just more. It's just more that I, I get to have fun with. I get to, you know, have more creative. Makes you more well-rounded. Yeah, yeah. I would like to learn how to play the sax, man. That's like, I love the saxophone. I'd love to learn how to play the sax. If I can find time to, I think that'd be pretty cool. But, uh, you know, that uh, might take some years. <laughs> um, I've seen people play the sax. It, <clears throat> so there's a difference, right? Playing the sax versus being good at it. Um, uh -huh. like I can pick up a guitar and I, I could play a couple chords, but I can't play the guitar. Like I, I know how to like strum a few notes. Right. Um, right. so I think there's a difference between like how much you want to learn it. If you want to become a master uh -huh. of the saxophone. Yeah. It's going to take years and years. Um, but I've seen people pick it up pretty quickly. Um, and it really depends if you have like a wind instrument background, I guess. Like if you ever came up and played like the clarinet or the flute. I did play the clarinet actually the for a year. I yeah. was terrible at it. You might be I was terrible so at, bad it. at it. You might be terrible the at it. The band teacher was like, "Don't you keep, don't do this next year." So it was one you year. Might, and you might stuff. be terrible at it, but what I was kind of getting at is because you have that background, you at least kind of yeah. you at least kind of know where the notes are, right? Like like uh -huh. if you picked it up. You, uh -huh. you might, and now that you have a more musical background, years later, like I'm sure it, it'd probably be even easier for you to pick it up and play it now because you'd be like, "Oh, like these notes make sense to me now." Whereas before you were just like blowing into the instrument and it came out noise, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm terrified the day my daughter comes home with a, a flute or a clarinet. Um, she tried to do the violin, but she could she could that was just too much. <laughs> that was too much for her. She didn't make it through the whole year with that one. Um, uh -huh. I think she just hated carrying the big thing around all the time because um, she she's nine. She's still tiny. Um, she, she she like I was like she had to carry that plus her like every year the book bags get bigger and bigger with books and everything else and I'm like. Yeah, that's true. She that's she true. Does, she does not want to carry all that um, on a daily basis. You gotta get so. one of the ones with the wheels, one of the rollies. They need to get them lockers. Like, like I, yeah. I I can't wait till she gets like middle school or something else where she has lockers and she just doesn't have to bring all that stuff home every day. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're getting more mature as the kids get older. It's kind of crazy. Like I look back when I was a kid, and even when you were a kid, and now this this generation is even like different. You know, every generation is, but it's like. I, I can't believe in 2018 that every book isn't available just on like a Google Chromebook. Like they all get these Google Chromebooks to use. And I'm like, isn't everything on, mm -hmm. on that? Why do they still have to bring stuff home? <laughs> like, should, can't they just do all their homework on that? Why just, just let them rent it for the year and then give it back to the end of the year. Um, but I'm sure technology is heading that way. Um, and technology has been great. Cause you know, now everybody can click on a, a SoundCloud or click on a YouTube and find Selena uh, mm -hmm. find some of her great, you know, she's not, you know, tell people now, you know, Selena's done a lot of great covers. Um, but, it, and those are probably some of the more clip through videos that you have on YouTube. If you look at the view counts, just because I'm sure mm -hmm. people are looking up, you know, <clears throat> looking up, uh, Justin Bieber or looking up, uh, Demi Lovato or one of the other covers you've done. Um, and your day probably just pops up randomly because it's a cover of such a song that they were looking for. Um, mm -hmm. But as I was kind of saying, like the bigger artist draws you into the little artist, um, it's great to get you exposure, right? So when you go click on one of those links and then you click around Selena and all of a sudden you see some of these original uh, ensembles uh, that she puts together, some of these original songs, and you're like, damn, this girl's talented. So I really hope this podcast will uh, open some people's eyes to Selena George. Uh, it's been great talking yeah, to you, great you. catching up to you. We definitely... Need to do this Thank way, you. way more often. Uh, I do miss having your, uh, your, your crazy around me. Uh, it's always fun. Keeps me away. <laughs> keeps a smile on everybody's face that's in the room when you're around. So I have to get up to where you're at now and say hi to you someday soon. You're gonna have to let me know when, when, when you're Definitely. when you're working around there. Um, but and then when other people I don't want to see are there, you gotta let me know that too because then I might pop in. Um, oh, keep a low profile. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I won't. I won't throw people under the bus <laughs> on on a not just national on worldwide platform that the internet is uh, in this podcast is because uh, you can find this podcast everywhere from iTunes to Stitcher to YouTube to everywhere. So um, definitely, we'll give a chance to get you as much exposure as possible, and I hope it does because you deserve it. You've been working hard. 
Uh, I'm not going to say I'm proud of you because, quite honestly, you did this all on your own with or without me oh, or anybody thank else. You. So, thank you. So that's thank awesome you to so see, you, see you accomplish and to see you keep growing. I hope you do continue growing. I hope you definitely reach out to uh, not just myself, but certified. Of course. In, certified I'll, be back. In, I'll be back on the show. Yeah, no, certified in general because I would love to feature some of your new music when it comes out. Uh, we do yeah. do the, I am bringing one of the old features I had from, from Ambition and, and, and Pure Style and everything else was called uh, Listening Session. I'm 100% bringing Listening Session back where I like will showcase up and coming artists, whether it's like if you have an EP, especially, I would love to put like the EP, especially if it's on like SoundCloud and it's like a free download and stuff like that. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, w- I would love to, like, just put that on the website. Let the people listen to it. Let them download it if they want. Um, and, like, I love giving that exposure. That's awesome. I love putting out these free albums because um, it definitely allows people to, to see people they've never seen before. So, And uh, hopefully by the time this one airs, I've said this before, all the old archives will be up. I'm still working on it. You're talking about going back 11 years of stuff, um, <laughs> uh, trying to get all that on the certified website so people can find all the old archives available to them. Uh, but no, uh, I will let you go. Um, but I definitely want to say thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I hope people got to know a little bit more about you, a little bit more about your crazy, as you put it. Um, but your music's beautiful and I am happy to know that I can sit there and hit you up, but I'm even happier to know I know where to find all your music. So I'm going to, uh, you got it. Thank you. Got it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. There will be links to everything in the show notes. Um, Selena will make sure I get anything that I I forgot. Um, real quick, though, do you want to tell people where they can find you before I let you go? Um, yeah, sure. SoundCloud, SoundCloud, SoundCloud dot com slash Selena hyphen X hyphen George. You can listen and buy um, my EP. Actually, I put out an EP project towards the beginning of summer. It's called Eclipse. Pretty cool. It's on iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, and all that. Just Selena George. Selena George across the board. Um, yeah, and you follow or I have a website, selenageorgemusic.com. I got a little blog that I just upstarted. If you want to, you know, just keep up with the Joneses of my life. So uh, thank you again, Mike, for having me. I do appreciate it. That's one hundred percent my pleasure. And much success, you know, much success to you. I like what I love what you're doing. Oh. All right. Well, same to you as well. I appreciate it. Selena, it's been great talking to you. I will talk to you soon. You have a good one. I will talk to you soon. All right. And we're out.